Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of In the Prague Seat. This is actually a special edition of In the Prague Seat. You got two of them this week. We got two very special guests who some of you may know in the industry as guys who sell a lot of really cool stuff. We've got Ken Golden from the Laser's Edge, and we've got Steve Feigenbaum from Cuneiform and Wayside Records. Greetings, gentlemen. We were just talking before we went. We're really happy to be here. I'm very happy to have you. I'm very happy to have you. And I was just telling both of them that it's been roughly a decade since I've seen either one of them in person um, since the, the end of kind of the, the near fest uh, thing that went on for many, many years and we all hung out together and I spent a lot of money at both of their tables each and every year. Um, so it's good to see you both again. Welcome to the show. So Thank one you. of the reasons why I really wanted to have you both on the show. So we talk to a lot of people here. I invite a lot of people on the channel who are in the music business, but more from a performance uh, aspect of it. So, you know, musicians and bands and things like that. But I wanted to hear like kind of what's going on in the industry today and what's been going on from a perspective of, you know, mail order and having a label and having to release, you know, music by bands and all that kind of stuff. So, kind of how healthy or not healthy is the, you know, the retail aspect of it these days, the mail order business for both of you. Uh, and like, what have you seen over the last year, but like more important, like the last couple of years. So uh, Ken, I'll have you start. Uh, Ken from the Laser's Edge, who if you've, if anybody has uh, never gone to the Laser's Edge website, a wealth of different types of releases, progressive rock, jazz fusion, classic stuff, avant-garde. There you go. <laughs> That's it. I'm done with the props. For That's it. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. I'll, I'll be here. I'll be here all week. So. Um, it's it's kind of it's kind of unusual and it's sort of a strange feeling because of this whole pandemic thing that we're all going through. But business really exploded for us. I mean, it was like I would say it's for like both going, of us. Yeah, Steve. Us. Yeah, and Steve and I. If people don't know, Steve and I speak very frequently, and uh, yeah, it, it's just been it's really been fantastic. I say it's kind of like going in the time machine. It's uh, you know back before, you know, the download era and uh, uh, people are buying physical product for us, you know, the buying CDs, people buy CDs, you know, it's, they're not going away. And uh, for us, we're seeing a big uptick in vinyl. I know Steve's been selling vinyl a lot longer than me, but, you know, we, and what's also interesting is we're seeing some of our older customers who never bought vinyl, now they're starting to buy vinyl. It's, and, and we're getting, you know, you get a mix, you get a guy buying some old vinyl, re, you know, a, a reissue of some old Italian album on, on, uh, on vinyl, and they'll buy some new prog metal thing on CD, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. But yeah, right now for us, I'm, I guess I'm speaking for Steve at the moment, uh, but the business for us is extremely healthy. No, it's true. No, it's true. I mean, it's like, it was not what I was expecting. Um, you know, I remember when the whole COVID thing, I have a, a, an assistant named Simon who's been with me for over 20 years, you know, and he's great and I value him and I want him to stay at the job and he likes being in the music business. You know, and I remember we looked at each other with the COVID thing when it started, when it you know, it kind of like, you know, at first it was, you know, it was, a, it was far away. It was in China. And then suddenly it was here and it was big and it was March, you know, and oh my God. And I remember we looked at each other and it's like, oh, it's going to ratchet down, you know, ratchet down yet again. You know, it did for like a couple of weeks. At I don't remember. I honestly but don't remember. In don't March, remember. I just remember like in March, it, I, I was nervous. I was very nervous. And I think everybody was nervous. And then it got, you know, this was a little quiet for a week or two. And then all of a sudden it was like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah, I, I don't, just I don't remember, went crazy. But, but what, I, what I remember is Simon and I both looking at each other like, well, you know, look, we've made it work this far. We've, we've seen a lot of bad stuff and industry changing and in a negative way. Uh, I hope we can continue, you know, and, and we were both 
very surprised. I mean, everything Ken says is we, we is were complete. lucky. We were lucky that brick and mortar was shut down. That helped. Yeah, us. we're. I'm assuming. I'm assuming, and you know, again, Ken and I talk all the time. We're pals. You know, he may hold up horrible signs that he actually really means, but we're still pal. He does mean it, but you know, um, but I don't pay any attention to him. And so that's, we remain friends. Um, but, uh, you know, at first, yeah, brick and mortar was gone. And so people who, you know, I mean, my take on it is I think that the industry has, the, the physical industry has dropped about as far as it's going to drop. I don't really see it going much worse soon. It's quite dropped. But the other thing that's happened, of course, is that a lot of people who were involved in selling physical, you know, no longer are interested. I mean, and the most obvious one is, you know, you look at Amazon, and there's an awful lot of things that I have on CD or LP or both. And, you know, with Amazon, you can buy it digitally. If you're a prime customer, you can stream it on their, you know, Amazon Prime. But they do not carry the physical item. And I mean, so you can buy it from their site, but it's from a third party and it's not from Amazon. Right. And, you know, and um, so some of the competition has gone away because everybody perceives physical as uninteresting and unhip and uncool, but there are still some people who want it. And we're both pretty well positioned to deal with that. And we're also, and, you know, we're dealing with a niche market. I mean, oh the, yeah, of course. I mean, that's, both that's dealing. you know, the people who are interested in what we're what we're dealing in. I mean, they're you know, they go back with us for years and years and years. You know. Yes, but having said that, Ken, we've still lost a lot to oh, streaming. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've lost. You know, a lot of those people. You know, there are a lot of people who. Steve, I think we lost more to death, you know, just, well, uh, we lost. just, just our customer base getting older and older, you know, they're just dying, you know, you know, so, you know, I, I you mean, know. that, that's also, that's also true. But I mean, no, I mean, I know I lost a lot of people to, you know, but there are still X number of people yeah. and their options are smaller. And, you know, the other thing is what Ken and I both saw is if you have someone that has never, you know, I've been in business for over 40 years, which is frightening. And Ken, how long is it for laser? 33. It's a lot. 33. 33? Yeah. The first, by the way, the first time I called Steve, he hung up on me. I just want people I to did know. hang up on him. He hung up. Uh, that's completely true. Um, he loves that story, but it's true. You know, but so 40 years, and 30, I mean, it's a long time, you know, it's a long time for both of us. And so if I get someone or Ken gets someone, he's never seen them before, they've never ordered before, and they're dropping $180 on, doesn't matter whether it's CDs or DVDs or vinyl, doesn't matter. It's like, that's not someone who, because of the pandemic, is home and bored and wants to listen to music because you don't have to buy physical to listen to music. You know, there's so much music out there for free that you know these are obviously people for whom buying physical is is part of their life and it's been part of their life you know and at first i think you know we were getting people because their stores had closed but by now i think the stores have opened but we're yeah. both still very busy we, we our retention rate our customer retention rate is exceptionally high you know because we get we're we're in a niche market we're good at what we do. We provide good service. And I think it's also gotten to the point where now customers say, you know what? It's kind of cool. I could just sit here in front of the computer and just and just order this stuff. And it just shows up. It and just shows up. Days. And the other thing, yeah. of course, is, you, a lot you know, of impulse un buying. Yeah. Un unlike on Amazon, you know, yeah, maybe Amazon have the best price on the new big thing, maybe. But they don't know what they're selling. It's just a thing. It's it's just a it's it's a zero two five seven seven two four two one two to them. So and and they have no idea what it relates to or who it might interest or anything, honestly. And that's so what you I'm, guys specialize in. Yeah, I, I'm going to take this in, in a very slight tangent. So 
people would always come to me and say, wow, you're selling CDs. You're still in business. And yeah, still in business. And of course, you know, over the years, you, you slowly see your business erode as some people shift to downloading and streaming and what have you. But the thing that really, I think Steve would agree with me, the thing that really hurt our business over the years the most was postage increase. Absolutely. For me, certainly, certainly it hurt our business the most yeah. when it came to international. We used to have customers all over the world. Now it's much more U.S. focused. I used to have customers in Canada ordering every single day of the week, literally the same customer ordering maybe three, four times a week, just one CD. You said, well, and that's because yeah. at that time, yeah. that one CD to Canada cost five dollars. Or I remember when it was two and a half. Was it two <laughs> and a half? And now it's now it's you know now it's like twelve dollars for one. Now CD. Now it's twelve dollars for one yeah. CD, yeah. and that, yeah, I mean, so so Ken's absolutely right. Um, I definitely think, and we both think, it's like whatever we get from from people outside of the USA oh, it's it's is, is is gravy. It's, it's bonus. bonus. Yeah. It's like you can't think because the, the the postage prices have gotten so high for for stuff traveling outside of the USA. And I mean, yeah, there was a point where, you know, well, it used to be that that everything was slightly graduated. So you, you know, like even for a CD to Europe or Japan, you know, it was, I'm, I'm, I'm making this number up, it was $12.50, but the next one was $2 more. And the next one on top of that was $2 more. And the next one, $2. So, you know, you put together, yeah, it's $12.50, but if you ordered six, it wasn't too bad. Even if you ordered 10, it really wasn't too bad. Yeah. Well, the way it works now with the, the, the post office changed everything some years ago. So the first half pound is one rate and then everything over half a pound to two pounds is the next rate so two cds to seven cds is exactly the same Same, yeah it's crazy and, and people don't really a lot of people don't i mean he says it in his in his faqs and i say it in my faqs but really who reads the faqs i never read the faqs yeah. nobody reads the faqs you so heard. you know yeah. So all they see is this horrible increase in, in postage shipping, prices, yeah. you know, but yes, Ken's, Ken's, Ken's yeah. very So right. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, I guess I sh we should maybe steer it back, but yeah, but that was the thing. It was like all this time people were saying, you know, geez, how are you, how are you staying in business? You're selling prog rock on CD. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, is everybody downloading? Well, the guys who, you know, most of the guys, I think they're more of our age group they're less inclined to download or stream. You know, I, I've noticed that my uh, customer base for metal, we do a lot of, we still do a lot of business in prog metal, power metal, things of that sort. But a lot of that skews to a much younger demographic and they're more, much more inclined to stream. Uh, which is why- Which is downloading, why Downloading's done, by the way. Nobody downloads anymore. No, right, right. no, it's all Spotify. No, no, no. I mean, if they download, I mean, they download would you, on Bandcamp. Why, why would you- download when it's when you pay 9.99 a month and, and you get everything but can, can i mean but you've also seen your market change because you know 10 years ago 12 years ago you were selling a lot more prog metal i think right oh yeah for sure oh yeah 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 i mean yeah i mean it was so what's market. like what uh what's like really hot like genre wise for both of you individually these days i mean you know i i, I frequent both of your sites pretty often and i see you know a lot of the stuff that's that you're putting up for sale on there so what what do you see is moving a lot of these well, well first of all ken and i it's really interesting because i mean we talk you know like i said we talk we're friendly you know and i sell a very small number of a huge huge number of things so you know there's a lot, lot of things that I sell three or four of, and as long as I can get them from a, someone that I deal with all the time, it's very easy to have one on the shelf. And Ken tends to, I mean, I'm talking tending, you know, Ken sells 
larger quantities of a smaller number of things. That's that's a fair. Yeah, thing, I think that, that, that's fairly true. I mean, you know, I have about ten thousand SKUs in my database, but but even still, you know, and there's a lot of well, you can see some of my inventory back there, but you know, some of the stuff we have like twos and threes of or ones, but if it's a good title, you know, we could sell well into the hundreds. Yeah. So, See, Ken, Ken, I can almost never sell well into the hundreds anymore. I used to, but that's not some, That's not a wayside music thing anymore. He's more um, long tail. He's the long tail theory more. more well, so. I don't know if I'm the long tail theory more, but it's just well. First of all, Ken has ten thousand SKUs, but I. But how many of them are active, Ken? Probably about six thousand. Okay, I have about. 24,000 SKUs and probably closer to 18,000 are active. Right, right. So- uh, and, and the ones that aren't active will be active when I bring over that shipment from Holland or when I bring over that shipment from England or when I bring, and I've got two pieces that I can turn back on. And, you know, I mean, there's not, that's a, it's fine. Although I got to tell you, inventory control is a bitch. Oh yeah. Oh, especially what's what guys don't know is, you know, like we're operating Discog sites and a, and a regular website and keep for me, keeping them both in sync. Oh, it's a nightmare. Oh, it's got it's, well, it's a huge amount of work. I mean, yeah, inventory I mean, yeah. control is, is a gigantic part of our job and turning things off and turning things on and, you know, and yeah, it's, it's a big deal. So, Pete, to get back to what you were saying, your question, really, I think. For us, prog rock, good quality prog rock always sells. It's, you know, I, I that will always, you know, I, you could pick a band, you know. All Traps on Earth. Let's pick a new one. All, tra All Traps on Earth. Good album. I mean, you know, I we sold a shit ton of those. I mean, and even for us. Yeah. I probably, you know, you take, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Ken sold more, but but over time we sold a hundred copies. Yeah, that was a very good. That, but yeah, I mean, you know, for us, if we come up with a good prog metal title, and uh, we could still move large quantities. I've seen a tremendous decline in power metal, but even still, if you know, if Symphony X came out with a new album tomorrow, you know, I, you know, you can count me in for a hundred and fifty of them. You know, uh, it, it's. It's really the cream rises to the top. You know, the best stuff, you know, really does well still. Um, you see a separation between like Prague from the 60s, 70s and 80s as opposed to the newer stuff? If it, if it has the old sound, what I call old school Prague, has that 70s sound and it's good, man, we sell a lot of it. Yeah. A well, lot that's all. I mean, that's all Traps on Earth is exactly yeah, what Yeah, all Traps on Earth. It's got that, you know, it's got that Anglegard you know, connection, but it's got the sound, you but know. It's got the sound. I'm and not even, you know, forget the connect. I mean, it also I depends. mean the, connection, the connection makes people pay attention to it, yeah. but it's got that sound. Yeah, I mean, it all depends. You know, if there was a new band, you know, there are new bands. What was that band, Magic Bus or something like that? They kind yeah. of sound like Caravan. Yeah. yeah. You know, nice band, good band, but, you know, we sell 10 copies. We're, we're happy, you know. It, it just depends on, on what it is. Um, I just got this uh, new band. Wait one sec, I'll show it. Wait. All right, and while Ken's while Ken walks away, I'm going to refill my water pitcher. Okay. So, so you now you got nobody. So like we got turned on, Pete. We got turned on to this great new band from France called Estasis. Phenomenal band, and you know, this is a band. They told me that the, the they put the CD out themselves four months ago. They sold about a thousand. Already. Wow, that's really good. And I mean, really good, right? And, you know, we went through 49 copies of these in a few weeks. You know, it's and it's it's quality, the real quality stuff. There's always going to be a market for the quality stuff. And with social media now, and, you know, you go on Facebook and and, you know, progressive ears or what have, you, you know, people talking up certain things, you know, there are uh, people explore. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and and every every genre has its little sub niche, you know, some more po popular than others. For us, like I said, that old school sound, 
that's money in the bank for us, yeah. you know? And, but unfortunately there isn't a lot of it around anymore. At least not, not right now. At least not right now. Yeah. Not good ones. Not, you know, not really good ones. And, you know, then you get, you know, you know, what we call Neo Prague, you know, as it, you know, the guys who, you know, the guys who go to Ross Fest or Prague stock tend to be more into that stuff. Depends, you know, that stuff could do well also. For us, not quite on the same scale as, as the older stuff. Old stuff, yeah. So, Steve, how about you? I know you you specialize in a lot of like stuff that veers out, towards out. jazz and avant-garde and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. So what, I'm not sure I understand what you were asking. Oh, just no, because Ken was just giving some uh, new information on what's really selling well for him. So what, what the type of thing? Well, I mean, honestly, our 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 situation is really different because you know something the, that does really well for me is 20 copies or 25 copies but i have a lot of things that are selling 20 copies or even a lot of things that are you know a decent number of things that are selling 20 copies and then a larger number of things that i sell 10 copies and then a larger number of things that i sell five copies now you know and um uh, I, I mean, I, I hope Ken does with mine that I say that, you know, but it's like, I have a lot of things, like I bring it in because yeah, I only sell three copies of it or four copies of it, but the person who buys that one of those three buys other things too. And it's an order and, you know, it's great. You know, it's, it's a little more complicated because it's a lot of skews, but it's, a, it's great. You know, whereas Ken's running joke with me is, you know, I don't get out of bed for four copies. I don't get it's out of just, bed for four copies. What? I really don't. I don't get out of bed. For no, you don't copies. get out of bed. Exactly. You don't get out of bed. For, so, I mean, <laughs> you don't get out of bed, period. So it's kind of different. I can't talk. I mean, yes, I did very well with all traps on earth, you know. And I mean, there were other things that I do very well with, but it's it's not on the same kind of scale, you know. I mean... We both are carrying the liquid tension project, but I'm going to sell 10 and Ken's going to sell 150. Right. Is that essentially fair? Um, yeah, well, more than that, but yeah. More than 100. That's fair. Right. That's fair. <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah I mean, actually, you and, know. And, 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 but I mean, that doesn't mean that, I mean, we're both doing all right. You know, I'll tell you something else, Pete, that, that has changed for my business over uh, the past uh, I'd say about three or four years, which I think has had some kind of an impact, is I always used to hate doing pre-ordering. I still hate oh, doing pre-ordering. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, become yeah. a necessary that's evil that. for us. Yeah, at, at um, for a period of, of time, we were the inside out, inside out uh, music's North American store, and uh, Thomas Faber, who runs you know the label, had asked us you know to take pre-orders because that's pretty common i just very reluctant to do it and we started doing it yeah and, and, and exactly. yeah, yeah just there you go. Today, right? right there you go yeah and it's i mean it's been very not only been helpful for us i think because in general customers are used to doing that they they like they kind of like doing it we're seeing a lot of repeats people get into the habit now of coming into our website frequently to see what we have up for pre-order and then they order it and they don't have to worry about it. Yeah. They want to ensure that they're going to get a copy. Yeah, exactly. Especially when we get into these colored vinyls and, and, you know, limited editions, we just went through, we just went through almost a hundred of this liquid tension box set. Um, I got more coming in. It's like, you know, with the hot pink vinyl. Okay. You know, you want it, we got it, you know? So, uh, so yes, yeah, so a pre-ordering, which is a that's a logistical nightmare for us, but it's become yeah. a necessary evil, and we do it. And, uh, right, right. So. Whereas, whereas pre-ordering is very small for us at this point, because you know, if you're going to sell, even if you're going to sell twenty, it's just like you don't need to do a pre-order. You have to do for us. We kind of have to do it given the volume that we're doing, because I have right. to know how much I have to know how much to bring in. You know, I can't bring in ten copies of something. And then all of a sudden <laughs> that, that you're going to, that, that, that 150 people want. Yeah, exactly. So it's just, so it gets to the point where it's easier to just put it up for pre-order. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, I've got, I've got 75 pre-orders. I know that there are a lot of guys who don't pre-order. 
I'll bring in 125 copies to start. You know, I've got, you know, I kind of, you know, uh, me and my employee, Jim, we, you know, we kind of, we hash it out and, and we order away. Yep. Yes. You know, I've ordered a lot from both of you guys over the years. And, uh, you know, Steve mentioned how you may only keep a couple copies of a lot of different things in stock. Yes. You have a real knack for there's that rare CD by this, you know, pretty obscure band that I'm like searching everywhere for. Well, that's, you that's kind of, I think, what, like that, right? I think that's, that's what we're known for. You know, I mean, we're, you know, I mean, yes, you can buy liquid tension experiment from us and we will sell our 10 copies and I'm happy to stock it. But that's not what we're known for, uh, you know, in the in the same way that it is what you Ken is known for, you know, and um, but we have this sort of like we have a lot of stuff and we have a lot of, you know, uh, things that are further out from progressive rock than many progressive rock dealers you know and that's kind of what we're known for yep absolutely you know and we have a lot of things that it's like we keep you know yeah we only keep one on the shelf and yeah we have to get it from europe and so when we sell it you know it may be two months or six weeks or before we can restock it you know but but you know, we still managed to turn over three or four a year. And we've been turning over three or four a year for literally, you know, 35 years. So it's like, oh, okay, you know, it's worth having it. You know, we bring in one or two. And when we sell out, we turn it off. And when it comes back, we turn it back on. Come on, Pete, hit us with the hard questions. We know where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did want to switch gears a little bit now. So you guys both have your own labels, right? Mm -hmm. So um, how does that kind of come into a story? <laughs> <laughs> so there's where it gets interesting. So I would always, I, I would love to know, like, when do you decide that, okay, this new band that I've heard or that contacted me have something that is worthwhile releasing on Laser's Edge Sensory or Cuneiform. Now, Steve, I know you took a step back from releasing new music on Cuneiform a few years ago, and now you're back to doing that again. So, well, you know, I mean, what, what happened was, um, you know, the physical, the, the sales of Cuneiform dropped by 80%. And I had, a, I had, two full-time people who were responsible for uh, promotion who worked for me and one of whom was my wife is what well, you know, I got one of whom <laughs> is my wife she was an employee but she is my wife but anyway anyway you know and it just it 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 drops so precipitously I mean it used to be that anything that was good for the artist and the record was good for the sales of the record and for the band. And, you know, I mean, I totally get Spotify and I don't want to turn this into like an anti-Spotify commercial, but one of the things I resent the most about Spotify is that the thing, you know, I'm paying people to promote this thing, but if, if it leads to sales, you know, a, a perfect example, here, perfect example. So I worked for many years with the Ed Palermo Big Band. And the Ed Palermo Big Band got an opportunity to be on Weekend Edition, okay? And for the Ed Palermo Big Band is a, a, an 18 or a 20 piece big band of people who are all professional musicians, but they like playing Ed's arrangements of Frank Zappa's music. So they, they do it for not much money but they are professionals. And so for them to come down and do weekend edition for the 18 pieces, the, it cost about $2,500 to pay them a little something, to pay their transportation and to give them a hotel room. So, and again, this is about 2008 or not, 2006, two, it was 2006 or so. And I took the risk that, okay, Ed, look, come down on a Friday night. I will book you a gig in Baltimore. I will 
pay your, you know, I will pay you a flat, this flat fee of, you know, $3,000 that you will give to the band and you will use for hotel rooms. We found them reasonable hotel rooms. And, you know, it's, I'm paying that. And you're going to be able to then do your 15 minute segment on weekend edition. And I'm banking on, counting on that my $3,000 investment will be made back. And they played on Weekend Edition on Saturday and it was broadcast to, you know, millions of people. I mean, I came in the next day and I mean, it was like my sight had blown up. I mean, it was just insane how many people were buying that Ed Palermo record. And so that $3,000 was a worthwhile investment, okay? But if people can just, for their nine, you know, if, if their take is, well, sure, I pay for music. I pay, I pay $10 a month. You know, if that's, that's fine, but I can't have a, you know, I can't pay people to push it on, 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 on $10 a month, none of which makes its way back to me. No, no. So yeah, so, so my intention was I, I, I laid off my staff, you know, my wife had worked for me for 25 years and Javier had worked for me for 13 years. And I laid them off and it was like, I'm fucking done. Uh, so I beat you to the salty language, Ken. <laughs> yeah, so. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm fucking done. And I mean, it's like, this can't be done anymore. And, and uh, anyway, I got dragged back into it, but, I'm, but it's completely different. And what I can do and what I tell people I'm willing to do and what is possible is so much less than what we could do. And, you know, but the sad thing is, look, I won in 2017, I won the downbeat jazz record of the year. Now, I'm just the record label. It's not my record, you know, but it's, look, that fucking plaque is on my wall and it's the proudest thing that I will, it's the most acknowledgement from the industry I will ever get. And I can no longer play that game. I'm glad I got it, you know, but I'm out. I can't do it. It can't be done. But, but I can still make it work for some people who understand and are willing to accept my limitations. Is that an answer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How about you, Ken? I... I actually stopped for two years and I, I just burnt that. Yeah, but you didn't, you didn't announce it. Cause if you'd announced it, you would have well, gotten, yeah, a, lot of, I, you I gotten a lot of attention. You would, you would have had John Collins would have run an article about you. you know, yeah, this, big, this big schnur over here. He had a, you know, so he had to get the sympathy <laughs> vote from everybody. So, so I'll go for the big sympathy vote. So in, in 2018, um, I, I don't know if too many people know this, but I, I had cancer. So in uh, March of, uh, of 2018, I had a radical nephrectomy. I had kidney cancer and it was my kidney. My, I lo lost my right kidney. No, I'm not going to do show and tell. And, um, and I still had a schedule of releases that I went, you know, we did. And then uh, I remember discipline was at the end of 2018 and I had promised Morgable I would put out their new album in February of 2019. So I kept doing it, but I was just done. Uh, absolutely. I was so burnt out. I couldn't do it anymore. Plus, plus he was looking at me having quit. He's like, and he quit. Back. That and I was, I was thinking, what's my angle? What's my angle going to be? And <laughs> how, you know, how am I going to get that sympathy vote? And, uh, <laughs> and then I just kind of, I kind of missed it. So I decided in 2020, if the right, you know, I still had distribution in place all over the world. You know, we still have catalog. So I figured if the right thing came along, I would consider it. And actually, we've put out two releases this year, uh, a band from New Jersey, uh, Everdawn. And uh, we put out a band called Aziola Cry. They're a trio from Chicago. And I'm about here's my next show and tell. So coming up in May, it's much. I'd much rather look at that than your scar. Yeah, the new album from Subterranean Masquerade nice. on uh, 
let's see, is this, oh, this is the black vinyl. We have, we have sexy yellow vinyl too. And, um, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm enjoying it. You know, I am enjoying it, but it's, it's just different. It, it is different than it used to be. It, well, it, Ken, you brought up catalog. Let's talk, yeah. a, you know, yeah. Pete, I want to talk about catalog because, you know, I've been a label for 36 years and, on, you know, before the crash of everything, I had 25 to 30 titles, some of which had been in print for 30 years, okay, that in a bad year sold 200 and in a good year sold 500, okay, year after year after year after year. I mean, just now, and I think, ten, you know, if I don't sell with unbelievably few exceptions, if Whatever I have left in physical after 18 months, maybe 24 months, it's gonna it's go over. in the it's gonna it's go over. in the same what? It's over. <laughs> it's, over. it's gonna go in the same hole they're gonna stick me in. You know, they're they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna it's gonna be a very deep hole and they're gonna shovel all the, the unsold cuneiforms after me. And it's like that was never true, you know. So so the physical thing, it's like the initial sales are not hideous, but there's no there's no uh, long tail whatso fucking ever. Yeah, you know. I mean, and, I mean, I mean, the things that I had, you know, soft machine titles and the matching mole titles and the universe zero titles and the you know the nucleus titles and blah blah blah. You know, all the things that you know. I guess I'm famous for you know. I mean, which sold for decades. I mean, they're all fucking dead. I mean, uh, they're, they're either all fucking dead or they're all, they're all out of print because they're fucking dead, you know? Yeah. And, and by the way, it's not just like me and Steve. This is, I mean, this is all labels now. Catalog is going away. I mean, stuff that you, that we all used to take for granted and you would just assume will be in print forever. Yes. It's disappearing. I mean, yes. you know, and and what's really sad is in many cases, these it's active bands, which are still creating new music, still touring when they when there is touring. And, right. you know, and that's maybe their only salvation. If a band goes on the road, that maybe they'll sell 30 pieces of an old, you know, of a, a, a of a 10 year old title. But um, they're actually more likely to sell the T-shirt. Yeah, that's true. It's absolutely much true. more likely to sell a T-shirt. Yeah, I mean, uh, but and, it, and and it's, it, I, I see it with all the labels I deal with. You know, you sometimes you're just shocked at what's no longer available. You know, things you just, you know, you just assume that that'll always be around. No, yeah, it's, it's I see stuff all the time. It's like all of a sudden you, you're looking for that uh, CD by a band that's fairly well known. Yeah, maybe an older one. You go to and Amazon doesn't have it. You guys no, don't have it. Oh, it's what's it's worse is Amazon does their on-demand crap. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. With that, and, and make it very and they make it very hard if you're not if you don't know what to look for. Yeah, that you're in, a, CDR, a CDR yeah. artist smells bad. Yeah. And there's a lot of folks that wait for that moment. And then they like, well, you know what? I have a couple of copies. I'm going to sell it on Discogs or wherever for yeah. like, you know, $800 or what have you. Right. And, and there are people out there, if they really want it, they uh, might maybe. Yeah. They're not going to pay $800. Not $800. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they'll pay some money for it if they really want it bad enough. Yeah, they'll pay some money, but they're not going to, yeah. you know, they're not going to pay yeah. that. There's always but, 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 but then I will, I will say for Cuneiform and this, you know, and what has happened is what has been like the only ray of sunshine overall has been Bandcamp for us. Bandcamp is tremendous, humongous, and wonderful for us. And if, it, if there wasn't a Bandcamp, I don't think there would be a Kinair for now. So, you know, because the physical old things don't sell, but you know I have an active catalog. It's, I mean, it's it, you know it, it's 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 amazing and frightening simultaneously. You know, I have like over 440, 460 titles. 
you know, that are active uh, at Bandcamp. And, you know, I don't have to physically make them, you know, and if I sell a few every now and then, okay, great. You know, and the, you know, and the, and the money is relatively good and they pay very quickly. And, you know, it's kind of, it's just amazing what you can do. And the other thing I just want to mention is like, you know, I sat down and figured it out, you know, look, Chinea, I mean, no, I, I, nobody owes me anything because I have chosen to release weird music that nobody likes. I mean, that's my choice and I've made it a long time ago. But if I sell a hundred copies of something on Bandcamp, I and the band make a lot more money than if it's streamed a million times on Spotify, a lot more. Money. And with this esoteric music that a lot of people aren't interested in, there's a relatively, I'm much more likely to sell a hundred copies on, on a band camp than I am to stream it, you know, a million times. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. That's the truth. That's the truth. So we were talking before we uh, we went on here. We we were reminiscing a little bit about the old near fest days. And so, do you, do you guys miss? And I know in today, right now, there's no festivals happening anywhere. But do you guys miss that kind of little prog festival circuit that just seemed to be going around for late no. night? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, the festival part was fine. The, the vending part was a nightmare. Well, the vending part was horrible. It was and the I worst. Actually, you know. I dropped out earlier than Ken. I, rem I think I dropped out in 2008 was my last year because I remember what I saw happening was the first few years of Near Fest, we would bring, you know, yes, you'd bring a lot of new things because they were new, but, you know, you could always sell a copy of, of Curved Air, Phantasmagoria, or you know, Il Boleto de Bronzo Il Boleto de Bronzo oh, East or whatever. Oh, I mean, there was, oh, you know, you bring a couple of copies of yeah. each of those and a million other things, a couple of copies. And what I saw was happening is that it was always the same people at Near Fest, which is nice, but it meant that you could only sell them what had come out since the last Near Fest. Right, because we had and, spent $500 the previous year on buying CDs. And, and, and what there else you got no, now, right? And there were no new faces, and the new faces that were there didn't buy, okay? They were not interested in physical. They might look at it, but they didn't buy it. And so, you know, I remember the second year, I think, that Magma played at Near Fest, if they headlined at Near Fest, you know, there was a new Magma record. I don't remember which one it was. And I've known those folks for years and years and years. And so, you know, I had copies of the record, of the new Magma record. And because Ken and I are pals, you know, and Ken gets me stuff and I get Ken stuff, you know, Ken and I were the only people that had the new Magma. And you know, I sold a decent number, but when I looked at the numbers and like, you know, by hiring these people, my hot, my having to pay for their hotel room, my having to, you know, pay for the table, my having to, you know, give them some hourly wage so they could eat something, you know, and then I'd look at like, I have to miss half the bands because, you know, I can't tell you, Pete, how many bands that I would have been really happy to, I mean, basically, if it was the last band on Sunday, I don't think I ever saw one. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I mean, I mean, because. I gotta because, load out. I gotta load out. You, you gotta get it out. I mean, otherwise, what it would happen is the band would be over at like, what, 1230? And then I'd have to go back and, and break down and put it in my fucking truck at tw at one in the morning. Yeah, Are you terrible. fucking kidding? Oh my the god! Worst. Oh, the worst. You know, Pete, did you, mean, Pete, did you ever go to Prague Power in Atlanta? No, no. So vending at Prague Power was the worst because I had to drive down from New Jersey. So it was a fifteen-hour drive, yeah. and it was me. My wife would come, and uh, I'd have and somebody. Jim. You know, Jim, my employee, would would be there. And then sometimes we'd have other guys come in from out, out of town and I'd have to put them up in hotel rooms and just to drive down. It was, oh, it was, 
it was brutal. And the thing is, it, they used to set up the vendors in the bar area. <laughs> it was never closed. It was just never closed. So I couldn't see any of the bands. Uh. I mean, you know, like literally I would have to cover my table and then who's going to watch the tables. It was, you know, my wife would fall asleep and somewhere, you know, she'd be watching the table and not off. You know? Lauren, Lauren would lie on top of. The yeah. She would, I could have her just lay. Table. Oh, it was the worst. And then, and then when this whole thing and, this, and Oh, the expense. And when the whole, and Oh God. And you'd be like in this bar and guys standing in front of you, like blowing cigarette smoke into your face. Right. <laughs> For, 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 for three days and then when it's all over you got to get up early sunday morning and you got a 15 hour drive back it yeah. sucked and it, at the end of the it day sucked. i stopped i, I mean, really, I, mean, what I, was mean making. Like, hmm. I, I remember looking at it and going you know if i had a 10 percent off sale i would have done this well or better and and i wouldn't have to have spent weeks preparing for yeah. and yeah. you know yeah. oh the, the last couple of times that i went to you know ken vended at near fest to the end but i dropped out but the last couple you know i went to to two near fest i think um where i didn't vent it was like oh it was, i had a good i had fun you know near fest I mean, wasn't too bad i mean because we did get to see the bands but it was well it we was, got to see some of them but you know i mean ken i didn't see bonko I did. I got to see. Well, yeah, but yeah, you I mean, but I'm just saying. Pick I had to. Yeah, but you saw Bonko because you chose yeah. to do the loadout afterwards. Yeah, for Bonko, I did. The yeah, near near fest was. I enjoyed near fest. You know, you know from my perspective, ones. and I went to the first like seven or eight of them, and I just I know like during when the vendor room was open in between bands. You could barely get to the table, your table, your table, or Greg Walker's table, because yeah. everybody was there. And you were just well, yeah, it's true. No, it's true. I mean, I mean, and it was that part was fun. Yeah. But, but then, like, so then it's like, okay, call time, you know. And then it's like, if I'm going to eat something, <laughs> do you remember? I, do you remember Trenton? But, the vending in Trenton. Oh, we were like in the black hole of Calcutta. Yeah, down I do <laughs> it was so bad, yeah, but you know, that, yeah. but but I mean, but the point is, is that you know, if I was going to 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 you know take stuff and and you know put it back in order or oh, yeah. bring stuff up from, I mean, the only time to do that is when the bands would play. You couldn't do it when the, I mean, you, as you said, Pete, that the people were were nineteen thick. How can you? How can crazy. you? How can you? You know, freshen it up. You know, there was. How a, do I eat lunch? Yeah, how you know, there was a know? level of it where it was kind how of full. I, how do I take a pee for God's yeah. sake? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, well, I figured that out. But, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, there was, a, yeah, I mean, like, you, hey, buddy, you see that bottle? Don't, don't, yeah, don't, yeah, you might want to stay away from that bottle in the corner. But, um, it's, it, it's not ginger ale. But the, um, you know, it was, in a certain level, it was kind of cool to be moving so much product yes. and make, and you know, like near fest, I, I, I used to make a, a shitload of money, but, and of course my expenses were crazy, but it was, it was okay. But you know, there was a, there's a rationale. If you, if you stop and think about it, how stupid is it? These people who are, most of them are regular customers. They could just order the stuff off the website and it could just be waiting for them when they got home and they could just relax. The whole purpose of the vendor room was like, let me go buy stuff that I could buy any day of the week. That, online. That I could buy from it. Well, and then you had the, and then you had the other people who, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I, yeah, I bought from you last year. Who are you? And it's like, oh, yeah. they never, they never go to your website. Oh yeah. I, I had this huge, I had five tables at Nearfest and I had, I don't know if you remember across the back of their vendor room oh, and I had too. this huge banner and I'd have it. And I'd have a guy like look up at the banner and say, Oh yeah, I think I remember you from last year. It's like, yeah. why did I bother with the? Why did I bother with that banner? You know, why did like with my, yeah. my, my, why, my why are we it? bothering with any of any, it? Any of it? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, of, you know, I mean, I mean, near festival. I mean, I don't want you know. It was fine and it was of its time and whatever. But I gotta say, hauling a bunch of shit, hoping you can sell it, really blows. Hey, listen, know? if Robin and Ken, Ch also, Robin Ken also lived closer. Yeah. To 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 near fest than I did. Yeah, it was a five hour drive for me. It's two. It was know? a little. It's two hour drive for me. You know, but when Rob and Chad started up again, you know, me and Steve, we'll be right there. You know, 
you can count on it. Well, no, I, I'll be right there as, a, as an attendee. I won't be there to sell. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. I, I, I it's heard not, it no, it's not happening. Directly from their, directly from their mouth. Right. Yeah, no. Well, you know, and it's funny because, you know, I go, I, I mean, I haven't been in a couple of years, but, you know, I fairly regularly attend Prague Day, which I really enjoy. I mean, I mean, it's it's a whole different thing. And of course, it's have you ever been to a Prague Day, Pete? I have not. No. Oh, uh, I mean, it's 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 a very different thing. And it's very outdoors. And it's North Carolina in the summer. Wow. And it's unbelievably hot, you know, and it's like hot to the point where it's almost amusing, except it's not amusing because it's so hot. It's and you know, it's not amusing. Well, it's not amusing. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sort of amused by it, but anyway, but it's fun. I, I really like Frog Day, you know, but it's like, um, and the sound is great because you know, I think outdoor sound is always easier to do than, than in a venue because you know, the problem with venues is you know, you've a, a room can only hold so much volume, you know, and so uh, before it starts to reverberate or get shitty or you know whereas outside it's very easy to have good sound and you know but i don't i don't want to bend there you know they do have bending and i mean you know i i vended there like 20 years ago and people still say oh i remember when you vended and it's like yeah i remember too but i'm having a good time yeah. now so <laughs> remember it for the wrong reasons yeah <laughs> you know All right no, well, vending, there you have it vending, everybody vending, <laughs> vending you know i mean i i i i really do cherish the memories of of near fest but you know unlike everybody else ken and i were really working very hard we yeah. really were yeah. you everybody know everybody else and, was goofing off and you know we yeah were, i mean i mean you know it was it was a lot of work and, and it was it was really eye-opening to go there a couple of times just to go it was so relaxed and so fun. And I got to see Pete, you know, it's like, yeah, it was. Pete, what Steve's trying to say is it's tough being us. Yeah, it's really it's hard. Like it. it sounds like it, but just what a, what a cross. Good thing. reminiscence. Do you, have another, do you have another sign to hold up? It's no. Tough no, I'll go back to this one, though. I like this one. This one was pretty good. <laughs> well, there, well, that's, that's, you know, in closing, I was going to ask you both to give your, uh, Steve's not wearing pants. <laughs> So I want to thank both uh, Ken and Steve for joining today for this uh, fun conversation about the kind of the industry and what have you. And uh, if you could both give uh, your links where people can go to uh, investigate all the cool stuff that you guys have. Sure. We're at lasercd.com, L-A-S-E-R-C-D.com. Do you have to spell it for your customers, Ken? For my, well, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Spelling is good here. That's good. Spelling is good. <laughs> uh, we're at waysidemusic.com. Uh, Pete, is that, is that with an fun. M, Steve? Is that with an M? Uh, yeah. You didn't spell it, so I just, you know. <laughs> Pete, this was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Oh, thanks. I'm, I'm so happy you guys came out. It was great having you. And uh, everybody watching, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. Uh, check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. For Steve Feigenbaum and Ken Gold and I am Pete Parlo. Thanks for joining us here and in the prog seat. Thank you. And does uh, Tranquility have a cue, Pete? Yes, it does. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Take care, everybody. See you <laughs>